Good evening, campers. Heads up, this is a bloody good one. As part of Plek, we've read The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida. This is the second novel by Sri Lankan author Shihan Akuratalaka. His first novel, Chinaman, was published a decade ago. Won lots of prizes, has been well regarded, but uh, I've never heard of it whatsoever. Will I be picking her up after reading this one? Oh, most definitely. One thing that I would like to point out is that if you have spent this long crafting your next novel, only good things could truly come about it. This is a intrinsically written, plotted, historic um, exploration on the Sri Lankan Civil War. Before we talk about this book, I want to mention three others, which I feel as though will give you a rough idea to what Mali Amada is. If you enjoy the breath and the magic realism of the works of Salman Rushdie, especially Midnight's Children, I think it's very difficult to not point at Midnight's Children when reading this, and, and I love Midnight's Children. But I'm a biased guy, Rushdie is my favorite author. To mention a book that I didn't particularly like Anuka Rupangasam's A Passage North, which was long listed for the Booker Prize last year, discussed the Sri Lankan Civil War in a very philosophical way. This really does get at the heart of it and how this narrative is built up to reference back to this magical realism is the well Mali Amida is stuck in the inn between people who are invested in Booker or other literary prizes will definitely heard of or have at least read George Saunders Lincoln in The Bardo and the in-between and The Bardo is very similar. I need to review Lincoln in The Bardo. I have many thoughts about Lincoln in The Bardo but we're not here to talk about Lincoln in The Bardo. We're here to talk about Mali Almeida. And at the beginning of this book Almeida wakes up. He's in a bit of a daze. He doesn't know what's going on but being a photographer, a gambler, and a slut, he's not, he's not completely disturbed by the situation that he's found himself in. He feels as though he's just coming down from a high off some silly pills. But uh, no, um, he's dead. And you, dear reader, will know that he is dead because Sheehan uses uh, the ever so divisive second person narrative. I'm not a big fan of second person narrative myself and I can imagine readers might be put off by that phrase alone. The Edson Kieran here. I'm outside. It's a heat wave. Look at these pegs. I, I need to uh, I need to start a GoFundMe and change them because they're all rusted and they break so easily. Nevertheless, if any panics about second person narrative, uh, just know that this book has one of uh, the most literary sentences that I've ever come across. So I'm going to put it on the screen here. It's poetic. It's sublime. And that's what true literature is. You're welcome. Rakuna Talaka's purposes, it works phenomenally. It brings that outer body, outer personal experience to the reader as we are going to get dragged through the streets, the buildings, the, the war scenes that have happened in and around Colombo. The reader is going to discover the landscape of the spiritual and the real world all at the same time. Let's talk about the spiritual world first, the in-between. It is a bureaucratic labyrinthine nightmare. Almeida is in long queues, he has stamp cards. On this stamp card we realise that he has seven moons, he has seven days to find out how he died, who killed him. The problem with Almeida is that he was a war photographer and he wasn't uh, he wasn't faithful to anyone. So he's working with the LTTE and the JVP. Maybe we'll have to explain what this means, Kieran. The LTTE are the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Edom. And they want a Tamil state. They are the separatists from the Sinhalese government. But the Tigers, although they are Tamil and that they want a right to land, they will also kill other Tamils in order to get what they want. The JVP are the Janaktha Vimukthi Paramuna and they want to overthrow the capitalistic state. They're socialists but they'll happily kill the working class to get what th th they want. Then have the United National Party which have been in power for two years and they're happy to kill either the LTTE or the JVP. 
P, and then you have the Special Forces Unit, who will torture, abduct, and kill anyone who they also think is affiliated with the LTTE and the JVP. You also have the United Nations who are within this, but they don't really help anyone. On top of that is also the Canadian Norwegian, they're like an amnesty group, the CNTR Centre, who are, uh, they don't, they don't really help as well. Are you beginning to understand how the Shrank War was absolute carnage and bloodshed? Everyone, even the people who they are fighting for, they are happy to kill in order to advance. The, the Tabal Tigers, if you look at maps during the Civil War, obviously the Tabal Tigers are at the top, and it's quite extraordinary how they really do like, move through the country. Like, you genuinely think, looking at those maps, that the Tabal Tigers would have succeeded and then uh, everything happens and just push them right back. It's um, looking at maps of what's been dominated by who. It's quite, it's quite extraordinary. It's quite extraordinary how a separatist group, like, got that far into a country. So why is Almeida, who is a war photographer, not really picking aside. Well, if you look at his family, his father is Sinhalese and his mother is a burger, so he doesn't really fit in. Almeida is also queer, so again, doesn't really fit into these structures that have been set up within Sri Lanka. And he's taken photographs of just obscene brutality. The plot of this book is who killed Almeida? How has Almeida's body been uh, what's the nicest way to say it? Completely dismembered and dropped into a river. Almeida now come into the realisation that he's dead, has, has completely forgotten. He doesn't know, but he's working with people who would have had him killed at any moment during his life. How is he going to find out? Well, luckily you can be transported along the winds throughout Sri Lanka. Why only Sri Lanka? Well, because of this bureaucratic afterlife, there are rules that you have to follow. You can only go places that you've been in your life. So he can't just go to Paris and view the Eiffel Tower. How we are going to find Almeida's body and then discover how he died all falls to his cousins. Javi, his girlfriend, and her brother Didi, who was the boyfriend. So Akuru Talaka is using Almeida to view this investigation, this discovery within the present time. Everything unfolds as Almeida is viewing it and through second person, how you are viewing it. So while this action is going on, we have this Pulp Fiction-esque MacGuffin, which is a box of five photographs, which really is the key to unlocking all of this. These photographs show horrors and it is down to Javi and Didi to obtain this box and distribute them throughout Colombo. These photographs will show how no one's hands are clean here. It is not the purpose of war photography to allow those who won, to allow those who feel as though they are the victors to forget what has happened within that country. The trauma, the war crimes, the amount of blood that was shed from civilians. It should not be something of Sri Lankan's past. Although Tarun Kalaka has written a scathing dark comedy, he makes a very sombre and poignant point. Discussing the myth of the origins of the Lankan people, it's built on rape incest and violence. And this origin story seems to have been perpetuated the trauma and the violence between the Sinhalese and the Tamils. This is an exquisite book. I, I can't give it like enough praise. It is absolutely phenomenal. This is a straightforward 9 out of 10. There's so much like packed into here. I I'd love to read this like in a year, two years time and pick up on everything once I know like a bit more about the Sri Lankan history and the Sri Lankan civil war because it is so packed. It is an absolute feast of information and wealth. It's it's phenomenal. But what's 
what's incredible, what's almost sublime, despite the blaring gunshot, despite the cries throughout Sri Lanka, it only takes a few whispers to really bring it all down.